What, you ask, is the most important tool at an artist's disposal? Is it the pencil? No. Is it the eraser? For some, probably. Is it a brush, or a marker, or a palette knife? No! It is their mind! G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza, and I asked you guys to send me questions using the hashtag Ask an artist on Twitter, and today I'm going to try and answer them as best as I can. All right, let's get stuck into it. Amanda says, "Hey, Jesse, what's your opinion on art thieves? I think they're thieving bastards." Do you even clag, bruh? Says, "What's the best advice you can give to an artist who's just starting out? What do you wish you would have known when you started out creating art?" That's two questions, you cheeky bastard. I'll do my best to answer both of them. The first one I would give advice to people starting out is. Do what inspires you and gives you creative fun, because if you try and press yourself into doing stuff, you get bored of it or frustrated at yourself or your lack of ability so far, and you'll just sort of fizzle out and get bored of it. But if you find something you love and you just keep doing what you love, you'll get better at it. As for what I would have liked to have known when I started out, uh, I don't know, probably some of the more businessy side of things, because the only time I've sort of taken a hit is when I haven't been prepared, whether it be watermarking client work before they pay me or don't pay me. And just having written agreements with people you do projects with, even if they're really basic, just so you don't get screwed over at the end. Extra asks, how do you avoid wrist injuries? I'm assuming from a repetitive strain, carpal tunnel, that sort of thing. I think having proper artist technique is important. I have no idea what that is or what it looks like, so I'm probably not the best to answer this question, but I have had sore wrists from time to time from lots and lots and lots and lots of repetitive work, and when that happens, I try and take breaks and also stretch. And one of the best ways to stretch is actually to uh, stretch this muscle, which sounds really weird because it feels like it's all in your hand, but it's actually this muscle or these tendons that tighten up as you hold the pen or brush and lean on something. So, a couple of stretches for you. One is this, and then another is if you cross your hands like this, and then you pull out like that, it actually gently pulls out that muscle. So if you can, if you can kind of do that, you can see it's sort of pulling that, and then you can also just rub it gently, and then just give yourself some breaks. Canned Cat says, how do you get in an arty mood, and what motivates you to finish a project that you're not necessarily feeling confident in? Another double whammy. You guys, you give you an inch and you take a mile. For me, it's about consuming stuff that excites me. For example, just recently, I bought this book. A few moments later. <laughs> Art of Magic the Gathering. This is just one of the things that I like personally that keeps my juices flowing. Books. I love how to draw books. I love the art of books for games and board games and stuff. So I think making sure you just have occasional constant little creative boosts helps keep your creative reservoir bubbling and brewing away. Now that's all well and good to create a foundation of artistic inspiration, but when it's time to get started, sometimes you're just not in the mood. And my advice would be just start. Just start making stuff because you will find as a creative being, the juices will get flowing and, and you'll sort of slowly sort of get into it. As far as what motivates me to finish a project I'm not necessarily confident in, that would just be by taking bite-sized chunks and taking pride in that. If you're looking at the overall project, every project goes through a messy stage and confidence can be hard to find at those stages, so just focus on what you're doing then and there, do the best you can, and just do that incrementally until you finish something. Hyperdrive TV says, I find myself distracted when trying to draw or sketch and procrastinate a lot. How do you discipline yourself to draw? I tend to try and focus on things other than the actual drawing. And that sounds counterintuitive, but if you're just trying so hard to focus on the act of creation, you can sort of overwhelm yourself and want to step back. However, if you just start creating and put on some music you like or an audio book you enjoy listening to, they can be really great ways to sort of zone out. And I find zone Tuning out is the funnest way for me to get involved in creativity. Eric Newton says, do you feel like learning in a class helps you become better at art? That depends on how you learn. I personally don't learn well in a class. So I did high school art class, but I never did any further studies or went to university or anything. I am a good self teacher. I'm a good consumer of content and applier of whatever my brain sort of picks up in my own little projects. It's potentially a slower way of learning. And I have learned tips and tricks in recent years that I should have learned much earlier on in my art career. However, it's also what keeps me motivated and, and having fun. So some people will prefer group study or even one-on-one -on -one mentorship, and some people prefer the autonomy of self-teaching and all of them are okay. Kalukio says, what makes someone an artist? I actually made a video on this it's called How Not To Be An Artist. In that video, the 
premise was essentially, if you call yourself an artist, you're an artist. And I stand by that. Essentially the theme in my heart being that if you express yourself creatively, then you're an artist. There's no elitist path or specific barrier that you have to overcome to be able to call yourself an artist. If you want to self-express and use creativity, then power to you, you're an artist. Madhav says, what is the point of a painting? Madhav, what is the point of sending me this tweet? What's the point of any form of creation? What, what is the point of eating and sleeping? I know there's a point when it comes to fueling our body, but what is the point of existence? What we are is essentially meaningless, or is it? Do we find our own meaning? Maybe you should express that in a painting. Maybe that's the point. It's me, Jeru says, how much should I be charging for commission work? That just honestly comes down to what people are willing to pay. Getting paid for your art is an entirely different thing to making good art. There are some artists who many might consider a little bit mediocre who get paid a lot, and there are plenty of artists who can create fantastic art and just can't sell. And it comes down to marketing and understanding where your audience is and how the supply and demand works. And it's a tricky question to actually answer in a short period of time. But I would say, put your stuff out there as much as possible and charge what you feel is a fair price. And if it's not selling, charge less. And if it is selling, Maybe consider upping the price as you build your base of clients or uh, people who consume your content. Felix asks, do you have any tips on getting your art out there so that others can see it and maybe so that you can even get paid for your artwork? The answer to that, in my opinion, is communities. Unfortunately, given that the internet gives us access to unlimited communities, that's a pretty easy thing to find. However, you have to pick the right ones and they have to also like what you're doing. I would recommend trying smaller communities, places like Newgrounds and DeviantArt, sub forums and groups. There are a whole bunch of little passionate websites and pockets of the internet that will love what you love and maybe what you do. It's a little bit harder to release stuff on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook and say, look at my stuff. When you're in a sea of millions of people who are better at it and have had more time to build an audience. Think of it as a game of traction. Start off small and slowly build and eventually your Instagrams and your Facebooks and your Twitters and your YouTubes will build over time as well. Dan asks, how do you decide whether to do art as a hobby or as a job slash career? I think that is a very subjective answer and I think really it comes down to how passionate you are about it and how much you need to do it as a career. I personally cannot function without being creative every day. So it's a no brainer for someone like me because if I tried to just do a normal job and be creative on the side, I would feel unfulfilled as a person. But you know what? It's not the life for everyone. And if that doesn't quite feel like you, then having art as a hobby is a fantastic thing as well. Further to that line of questioning, Chaotica says, is being an artist a realistic career goal? I have aspirations. That's fantastic you have aspirations. The answer is yes. That doesn't mean it's straightforward though, because it's not like being an accountant or being a grocery store clerk or being a builder, there are mechanisms by which you can go through a process and have a more predictable outcome in those previously mentioned professions. However, a creative career is pretty volatile and unpredictable and can land in a whole bunch of different places and might not land for a long time. So the answer is yes, it is a realistic goal, but you also have to have realistic expectations and work a realistically big amount in the same way that yes, it's a realistic goal to be a musician or an astronaut. It just takes a little bit more work than, I don't know, getting a job at the gas station. Madison says, I'm 19 and in uni and I'm struggling with the fact that my parents hate the fact that I draw. They don't want me drawing and do not believe in me at all because they know my audience is literally zero. What can I do to prove my parents wrong so this can stop? The answer is to just prove them wrong by making it happen because if that really is what you want to do, then there should be nothing that will stop you from doing it. However, I will warn you that that very last part of your question, so this can stop, isn't up to you. You proving people wrong and making something happen for yourself is entirely in your control, but if people around you approve of that or not is out of your control. So you need to let that go and decide for yourself what you will be happiest 
doing. All right, we've been going for quite some time now. I feel like we've definitely covered a lot. So I'm just gonna scroll through and we'll just pick one more to finish up on. Well, this is a good question from Cherry Bomb who says, do you have any hints on being noticed by studios? I feel like I have what it takes, but I don't know how to showcase myself properly. It's a really good question. I believe it comes in two parts. One, being good, and two, being visible. The first part, being good, comes with time and practice. And if you want to work for Pixar or Marvel or Disney or whatever, you're gonna have to get good because they have high standards. There are also local studios and smaller groups and game developers and all this stuff that maybe have lower standards, but still a good quality that you could attain earlier and also get some real in-studio experience. So you don't necessarily have to go straight to the stars, although that is something you could do if you really want to. Which brings me to my second part, be visible. Now, there are different ways to do this. And of course, one of the most straightforward and easy to start ways is get started on social media and put yourself out there and get involved in communities. But studios are real places and groups of people. So one of the best ways to be visible to these people is actually to go to them. Go with your portfolio of good art and knock on doors and don't give up. And they may not pay attention to you and it may be very disheartening. So you just keep going and you just keep going. And eventually you'll be the asset to a studio that another studio will see and be like, oh, we want that. And they'll take you and pay you to be in their studio. And then hopefully, says someone who has no experience in an actual studio, you'll be someone whose name travels around in these groups of people because the reality is the world is a small place, especially among these communities that are very tight knit and studios are like families essentially. And if your work starts to travel around and your name starts to travel around in these communities, you'll be surprised how far your name can spread and how much of an asset you can become to an established studio. But it really takes a lot of hard work, both uh, artistically and practically. Lots of legwork, knocking on doors, ringing people, emailing, showing up at their house at night, tucking their children into sleep. Anyways, that that is gonna have to be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video for a change. It's a little bit different. It's a it's a, an art video that's less about making art and more about talking about how we can make it. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you want to do this again, let me know in the comments. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to Draw with Jazza for more fun with art. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.